Do you write comments in your code? Why? What are they there for? Practically, for most developers that I meet, the reason that they write comments is to meet some coding standard or rule that's set down by somebody else. This is generally a poor reason to do anything if we're trying to be optimal. This doesn't mean that all comments in code are bad or a bad idea, but it's worth thinking about what value they really do add. So what is the real goal of comments in code and how do we make them useful rather than just merely a chore? Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. The right comment in the right place can be a big help. But in my experience, the vast majority of comments are a complete waste of time. As a result, my default stance on comments in my own code is to not write any at all. Don't worry, I'll explain that what later. While there are circumstances where comments may be helpful, in my view, none of those circumstances are covered by the normal default approach that most development teams seem to adopt to commenting in their code. So what really is the point of comments in the first place? Fundamentally, they serve a single purpose, to make the code easier to understand. That's it. If they don't do that, they're useless. If their goal is to do something else instead, perhaps like adding names to track who changed what, well, we have much more effective and better tools than comments for that kind of thing in the form of version control systems. So to be useful, a comment must add to the clarity of the code, or it's pointless and useless. The most common default approach to writing comments, as far as I can see though, doesn't really add to that clarity at all. And worse, it gives us an excuse for writing poorer quality code, because we can write any old rubbish and then excuse ourselves by attempting to explain it away with comments. Claiming that our comments make the code more readable when they don't really. The most common default approach to comments are probably doc strings. The comments that we add to each function that are meant to describe what that function does. On the face of it, this may seem like a good idea, but is it really the best approach? I think that this is popular because it's easy to communicate, not because it's good. Add doc strings to every function is an easy rule to enforce. My IDE nags me about it all the time, but how does it help to make better code? I once worked for a PC manufacturer writing low level code. One of my colleagues used to write code like this repeating every line of assembler code with a line of comment, explaining what that single line of assembly code did. This adds nothing to our understanding of the code. Does this really help anyone at all? This is just more typing for no added value. I suppose you could argue that this is useful to someone who doesn't understand the syntax of assembler code, but surely that isn't the target audience for comments. Let me pause there and thank our sponsors. We're extremely fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts and Transfic. These companies offer products and services that are very well aligned with the topics that we discuss on this channel every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering in general, please do click on the links in the description below and check them out. We also have some rather exciting news about the channel. For those of you that don't know, The Engineering Room is a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in the software engineering field discussing long for, in long form their ideas. From now on, you'll be able to find full episodes on all of your favourite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Amazon Music. Clips from these podcast episodes will continue to be posted here on the YouTube channel. And if you still want the entire episodes in video form, you'll be able to access those through the Continuous Delivery Patreon page. All of our old episodes are now available on your favourite podcast platforms now for you to listen to at your convenience. This Sunday, we're welcoming the Chief Architect from Spotify, Nicholas Gustafsson, to the podcast. So be sure to check that out from 31st of March. 
Your incredible support helps us to bring these regular episodes. So please leave your positive reviews on your preferred podcast platform to help us to grow and to continue to bring you great guests and explore their insights. Thank you for listening. Now, back to comments in code. Comments are meant to be read by other programmers or maybe ourselves in the future. So we should always put ourselves in the place of that other person or our future self. What would that person like to know about this code? Let's start with the assumption that it's not our job to teach readers of the comments our coding language. Our job is to make the intent of our code clearer, not to teach computer programming. I'd argue that the main thrust of the code, whatever it is that it's meant to achieve, is best captured by the code itself and its tests, rather than in comments. If we're careful about how we name things, it's much easier to be clearer about what each part of the code is meant to do. If we also break the design of our code into small pieces, modules, we can now name them clearly and concisely, making our code inherently more readable without the need to add any extra comments. We explain our intentions with the code itself. I think that good code should be small, focused, modular, clear and concise. It should clearly state what each small piece does rather than rely on comments to tell us that. We'll help ourselves by the choices that we make in terms of design. For example, we may choose to use well-named abstractions to hide details of one piece of code from another. And if we adopt a strong separation of concerns, each part of the code is now focused on achieving a single task. That will also make it easier to name that piece well, and so helps us to write more readable code. Writing doc string style comments that merely repeats what the code already says simply makes us do more typing. And I'd say we also end up focusing less, not more, on what really matters, which is what the code is meant to achieve, rather than the uh, minutiae of how it does it. Okay, so it's certainly difficult to be expressive in languages like assembler. But all that means is that the comments are more important, not less. And this kind of mechanical approach to commenting doesn't really help at all. I'd say that the doc string is the modern equivalent of those useless translation style comments that my friend used to write. Good code is designed to be clear and obvious, so let's start by working to achieve that. Part of the problem here is that clear and obvious is quite a high bar to set. It's much more difficult to write clear and obvious code than it is to add a usually less than helpful doc string. So by mandating the use of doc strings, we give ourselves a get out of jail free card, an excuse to do a worse job of design in our code. It means that we don't need to work quite so hard on making our code clear and obvious. This is a terrible trade off though because we are now spending more time and effort writing redundant comments that are no use to anyone, and that's time that we may have used to do a better job of design. Here's a simple example of using comments as a crutch, an excuse for writing bad code. What does this function actually do? Without reading the implementation detail, you can't tell, because I've picked poor names for things. I could add comments to this, and that would certainly make it easier to understand a little bit. But how much better is this code uh, that I just name well? If I went ahead and changed the function when I'd only commented it and then forgot to change the comment, my comments would now be lying to me about what the code actually does. The code is always definitive in terms of what it's doing, so the code itself is always the best place to explain what it's doing. By working to make the code as easy to read as we can, we are keeping our description of what is really going on up to date, reducing the amount of work in doing so, and most importantly of all, writing better code. If you don't think that our code and comments will get out of step with each other, then you've probably never worked in a big legacy code base because it happens all the time. When the comment and the code don't match, we have to go back to the code because that's the real truth of the system. So we may as well save time and effort to make the code itself more easily understandable in the first place. So that whenever we need to read it, it's easy to see what's really going on. So a better solution is to simply pick better names for things. Readability goes a bit farther than names though. 
We should also work to design the entry points into our code so that they are clear and expressive and as unsurprising as we can make them. Another way of saying that is that we want our code to minimize surprises. And another way to say that is that we'd like to minimize side effects. This is less though in terms of the pure functions of functional programming, but also more generally. If I have a function that opens a channel, I'm okay with the idea that some state of the system has changed and that's a side effect in a pure functional world. But I don't want that function to also write out the header for the channel. I want that code in a separate, well-named place. So as well as minimizing state changes, this too is also about ideas like separation of concerns, abstraction, and naming things well. I want my code to make it as clear as I possibly can what's going on. And if I can achieve that in the code itself, then I don't need to write comments that explain what the code does. None of this means that we should do away with comments altogether though. But I do think it worth treating the need to comment as a potential sign that your design isn't yet good enough. If you feel the need to write a comment, your first response should be to look for ways to refactor the design so that the comments aren't necessary. If you can achieve that, then the code will certainly be better after you've changed it. I prefer to nearly always avoid doc string style comments. I also prefer not to have inline comments inside the body of a functional method. So what's the role for comments at all then? I think the comments are there to add information that isn't in the code, but that's useful to the person reading it. We often think of programming as us communicating with a computer via code, but I think that's a big mistake. Computers work on binary data. They're fine if we program them by just flipping switches. So the best way to talk to computers is just with a sequence of bits. But that's hard for us to write and hard to understand. So when we write code, we're organizing our own thoughts and we are communicating with each other, other human beings. Sure, this is also in a way that the computer can understand, but software languages are human to human communication, not human to computer. So what sorts of things usually help us to do better understand code? Can we add information that the code doesn't contain? Well, yes. If there are several choices for a solution, for example, maybe mention them and explain why we picked the particular one that we went with. The code tells us what it does. The comments that are most useful tell us why we made those choices. This can be somewhat nuanced because it's also contextual. So while I don't want to end up teaching you how to program via the comments, it may nevertheless be helpful if I explain things that were not obvious from the code itself. So now I need to make a judgment, judgment call about what's obvious and what's not for the reader. If I choose some esoteric way to structure my design, I should first question myself about, about whether or not that's a good idea. Remember, simple, clear, readable code is good code. But if my more complex choices really are a good idea for some reason, then maybe now, finally, I have a sensible reason to write a comment, to explain my thinking. My goal with comments like these is not to explain what the code does, but to describe once again why I made this choice. The only other valid reason that I can think of for the presence of comments in the code is to document APIs. This is the case for DocString. I confess that I still feel a bit grumpy about the need to duplicate my work if I have well-known functions and parameters. How hard would it really be to automatically generate the outline of a doc string for a method like that? But in addition to saying what the method is called and listing the parameters and their types, the real value of a doc string at this point is to describe the use of the function in a broader context. A doc string seems like a good place to do this. It has the advantage of being next to the method signature, but the downsides take two forms. First, how do we decide which methods and functions are worth documenting? And second, are we thinking about the use of the API clearly enough at the point at which we are writing the doc string? Or are we just reacting mechanically and duplicating the description that's already better placed in the code? I guess that my aversion to doc string is, is based on the reality of their most common pattern of use. First, we don't need to a doc string for every function or method. 
Private functions and methods are internal implementation detail. If they're named well, we don't need to write again the names. And they're, they're not part of the public contracts that anyone else should care about. So they don't need um, any additional documentation, in my opinion, and don't benefit from being documented in the same way as public APIs. So my rule of thumb is to only add doc strings for externally accessible API points that are used by people outside of our development team and or organization. Now the real value of these things is not the param lists and repetition of the function names, it's in describing how to use this code. For that, my real answer is to provide a working example, a test that clearly demonstrates how to use the API. If you do need written documentation of the level of function calls, then I think that what is most likely to be useful is a description of the outcome that you'd expect. Call it like this and you'll get this outcome, which is, I suppose, just a textual description of the test that I would much prefer to have access to. What I don't want is someone's life story in description and descriptions of how clever and complicated the solution was that they came up with, or comments that say things like, this is a loop and now calling this function. Comments certainly have a place, but I think that the downsides mostly outweigh the upsides. It seems to me that the best code that I've seen doesn't have lots of comments. It doesn't need them. My preference is to try quite hard to write code like that, that doesn't need comments. Thank you very much for watching. And thanks too to our patrons who support this channel. If you enjoy our stuff here on the Continuous Delivery channel, please do consider supporting our work by joining as a Patreon member. There are lots of uh, extra benefits to doing that. A, a very lively and active Discord channel, as well as access to, to the long-form episodes that I mentioned earlier. Thank you again.